Let's go over the airbrush just real quick, what we're gonna use. This is just your generic Pache H. Uh, the top fell off of mine. It got old, like me. Uh, the button's gone, but it's just a single action. Let's describe single action airbrush real quick. Where do I, where should I aim? You guys? Okay, over there. Now, uh, typically this is single action. Air, air source comes through here. Um, so this button controls the air. Paint is this cup right here. So paint comes up through the bottom and the action of air coming through the top actually siphons the paint through the cup up. This is called single action external mix because the paint is mixed with the air outside the body of the airbrush, okay? And it's controlled by this, it's called a needle because what's under here is a needle and that's the cone. This is just a giant version of what's inside your Iwata. Now, I don't wanna run the silicone through my Iwata, so I'm gonna run it through a Pache, just because these parts, like I said earlier in the broadcast, uh, are bigger and much easier to clean out because you're gonna get dried silicone in there no matter what. And again, what don't we ever do? Put metal in an airbrush to clean it. Don't use metal. And that's airbrush abuse, all right? And you go on a whole list of people, it's bad, it's bad news, don't do it. <laughs> um, this is the color cup. So this is an external mix versus an internal mix, okay? Happens to be an Iwata product, L love Iwata. Now, this is just a cap. Now this is still air, but what's inside, this is just a fancy handle is the needle here is inside there. Now the air and the paint coming through this color cup are mixed within the body of the airbrush. So this is called a dual action internal mix airbrush. And the dual action comes from one being the air down and back pulling this needle back. Because a lot of people are intimidated by these, these airbrushes and all the little parts and all that they are is there's a spring in there so that this can close again. So when you open it, it snaps shut like an old screen door or a new one. And this trigger, press the air, air source coming here, paint coming in here, and under here, you just have a couple caps that help regulate the direction of the air and the paint, but there's a little needle. Now, just like in the single action, this is the big needle. This is the little needle here and the little cone, okay? So although this isn't an airbrush class, you get a little brief lesson. But we, that's where we don't wanna put any metal products, okay? To clean it, and you can see I didn't clean it. There's some junk hanging on it. No, but, uh, and you don't wanna bend these needles because they, they're, they're made to precisionly meet that tip and close off and allow paint to flow or not flow, okay? And this little deal here that turns, that's just compressing a spring or loosening a spring to make the tension of the trigger harder or easier to spray, all right? So don't be intimidated by dual action airbrush. And this fancy thing's the cap so you don't spill paint all over your belly that's always hanging in the way, all right? Now this, although it's cheetah painted or painted, it's a preset handle. I highly recommend these for the dual action users because it stops this trigger from going back. You can set small lines. If you're doing modeling, you can set a limit to how far back. And once I set this up and we're painting, I'll show you on a piece of paper why this is handy. Uh, some guys hate it, Craig hates it. Uh, they consider it cheating. I don't know if you can have cheating in art, but he, he's a, I'm a cheater, so uh, we'll talk about that too. But I highly recommend it, especially to kids starting out with uh, painting. Um, I think it helps you. When I gotta move fast on a job and cover a lot of ground with uh, modeling, it, it kicks butt, kicks ass, kicks ass. Now this fancy thing is a piece of rubber tubing. This I believe was invented by a guy named Kazu, all right? He works with, or he used to work with Rick Baker, super talented artist. What this does is we can spatter with this as well. Spattering 
with the airbrush. We could have done all this with the airbrush, which I might have done at work. But not everybody has one of these and is ready to go. So we put this extender on the, on the cup because we're going to overfill the cup with paint, watery paint, and drop our air pressure down so that the paint is overloading the amount of air pressure pushing it out, causing it to spit. Now you can go and spit the paint all over and spatter. And you can move pretty quick and you can go through colors. You just rinse them out, next color. And by doing it this way, you get a very random, quick spatter mix as well. Okay, but not everybody's outfitted. Now you can do that here. You can open this sucker up. Now you got paint just pouring out of here. But through the airbrush, the tip of this is much finer than this, so you're going to get this very fine uh, ground pepper look all over your your work. So that's why I don't I don't use this for spattering unless that's the look I'm after. All right. Um, and there's a couple. I like having a little air. There's a Mac valve here, a little small air valve. I can bring my pressure down here, especially on the on the spatter brush. I can leave my regulator at my airbrush at the compressor high, and then I can bring it down here and control the spatter, all right? So when you're gonna spatter all these colors, again, with these acrylics, Tim Gore's Bloodline, beautiful paints, though you make those very watery as well. And, um, and that's a bit about airbrushing.